Hi everyone, this is Jim Egan, head of school, Synapse School with a Friday update. It is winter break, but I wanted to be consistent and have a video for people to see or to listen to. Uh, I get a lot of feedback uh, that people love that continuity uh, and um, sort of a solid, uh, a solid thing on a Friday to look forward to at a time when many, many things are in flux for all of us. Uh, I will get to what to expect next week uh, at Synapse, but before I do that, I did want to give you um, some thoughts, uh, my thoughts and opinions on um, the conversation that is happening uh, right on the peninsula uh, where we are, uh, in the broader Bay Area, in California, and the nation around schools reopening. Um, I know as a, a head of school that worked with a team to reopen in September, right? We've been open for many more months. I can tell you some of what I'm hearing in the press, in the news, with the pundits, uh, you know, what I'm reading on, on, um, online, uh, is, is reductionist. And, and I, and I think, um, uh, that is also feeding into a lot of anxiety for parents. Um, so, uh, before I get into that, uh, I want to sort of set the stage. Uh, next week, the um, uh, the National Association of Independent Schools is having its annual conference. Myself, Isha, and Liz are going to speak at this conference about our distance learning program. We are seen as thought leaders and forward uh, thinking educators and doers, right? Not just thinkers, but doers. And so our session, I'll read the blurb here, um, is this. Uh, online learning, built to serve immediate community needs uh, is very much real. We discovered that families and staff reassessed what it means to learn and work at school. In this session, we'll share how we developed our distance learning program, not only as a solution to a temporary shelter in place, but as a long-term strategic opportunity, yielding new revenue, hiring opportunities as well. With research uh, informing all that we do, we started to explore a new model of school that is more suitable for the 2020 reset and beyond, right? So we're thinking about distance learning uh, and we're thinking, and we began thinking about distance learning, not in, in the context of pandemic, but how does uh, distance learning, how do these new uh, technologies help to uh, reimagine what school and working in a school um, should be down the line. So I'm very proud that we will be going to speak about um, our distance learning program. We've been invited to do that. Um, and it's another indication that we um, are seen as thinkers and um, doers that are a little further down the road than some other schools. Uh, and, and I think it's our duty and our obligation, and it's part of our vision as a school to, um, to help others imagine what they can do. And um, I think many school, uh, schools and school leaders um, are now being forced into thinking about the immediate, right? We have the ability at Synapse uh, to think beyond the immediate, uh, and that is a real privilege. I understand that. I think some schools right now are think, have to think about the immediate um, because of the demands and the needs of their communities, particularly those public schools, right? There are, there are front and center needs that are immediate, and that's, uh, that is a real burden to try to reopen when you've got immediate needs uh, uh, that are um, comp complicated and, and uh, really diverse in nature. Uh, I don't think you can just simply dismiss that. And um, what we try to do at Synapse um, is to really think through why we do things, uh, how we do things, and what the purpose of our school is. And so I wrote a purpose document, uh, really a guidebook for staff that I just sent out as we released um, employment agreements and as we begin hiring for next year. And this document, which I wrote, uh, is really an onboarding document, but, it, but it's also there to help uh, orient uh, staff, like I said, it's a guidebook, like a travel guide into a foreign country, right? Because we are a little different or very different sometimes than other schools. And I put in there a slide about our culture. And the, the slide, it says, a slide, our culture, some important aspects. 
Uh, values are what we value. Teachers have great freedom and responsibility. Relationships are everything. We are intentional in all that we do. We pay top of market. Behavior and attitude matter, right? I think it's important to just spell that out for teachers and staff. It's typically, from my experience, schools don't do uh, that much. Uh, I went on to write about context as well. I, I really do think this is critical uh, to pay attention to in this debate about reopening schools, but certainly about synapse as well. I say context is everything. Leadership are responsible for setting the context and helping staff make good decisions based in that framework. And I think that has been lost, right? You might be saying, so what? Well, I think values and context matter more than ever, right? Yet no one is thinking about the pandemic that way, at least in what I'm reading and what I'm seeing and in my circles, which are the education circles, right? It's all about the latest study. It's all about the latest science. It's all about the latest data. It's all about the latest experts. By the way, all of that stuff matters, right? We're working with Stanford. I was on email this morning with Dr. Wang, one of our uh, experts, asking about um, variants and the virus. And you know, uh, you know, can you give me percentages that will be, you know, open at what date and month? Like, so I, I understand that that's super important. But also, what is important is science implementation only sticks if context is understood. And I think that's what is missing in this conversation, right? Implementation science matters, right? You have to explore, um, you have to then install whatever uh, innovation that comes out of the science and research, uh, whatever, that, whatever that is. And then you have initial impl implementation, right? Before you can get the full implementation. And so um, the context really, really matters. And for us, you know, we explored our innovation and restarting a school in a pandemic is an innovation. There's a lot of innovation that goes on. So we explored this from June to August, right? And then we implemented it in August, September. And then that initial implementation uh, has been through T1 in, into, um, into February, right? That's the initial implementation stage. And it's, by the way, it's not linear. It's adaptive, right? It's not... Um, uh, prescriptive, it's discreet, or it's not, uh, it's not, dis it's descriptive rather than prescriptive, excuse me. And um, I think too often time and resources are wasted trying to insist that organizations, in this case schools, uh, public schools I'm thinking of primarily, um, those practitioners, those teachers, those leaders in those schools are being forced to use an innovation, right? Again, opening a school in a pandemic is innovation. And they're, they're being forced when they haven't decided if it's a good idea or not, right? Like that, that is not, not a good way to make decisions, right? Our values being assessed, our principles being um, uh, accounted for. Do, does everyone know what they are in the, that school building? Uh, and does the context matter, right? What are those um, elements of that school building or that district? that may make full implementation uh, of the research and the study and the data um, not work, right? You've got humans, you've got, um, uh, you, you've got buildings that need to be adapted, you have um, school structures that need to be adapted, you've, you've got teachers and staffing, and th there is a lot of complexity, and the context um, really does matter. And so for us, for example, you know, our goal was to have, you know, our practitioners, our staff um, reach or exceed, uh, you know, a fidelity level of 50% on our innovation, right? That means teaching in a hybrid model. And um, they were assessed throughout the fall by our um, leadership team, particularly our division heads. And um, once we felt that our staffing um, was capable of reaching or exceeding that sort of 50% mark, right, of half of our staff that are teaching can handle this new innovation, this new model, um, it means that we can now onboard new staff. It means that we can now, um, with confidence, adapt and make changes, right, to add new things into our model. And we can now look down the road at a full open uh, in the fall, that um, will involve five days on campus and we can begin to remodel our, our buildings and really think uh, that we can do this. And 
have a distance learning uh, program there too. We're going to need that. Schools are going to need that um, in the fall. So again, we're on top of this and we're, we have the luxury of thinking about this. I think other schools are now just trying to open like we were in August. That is a really difficult task. And um, I think, uh, you know, being poorly informed and half-hearted in an attempt um, to, to uh, you know, appear to, to appease uh, pundits or politicians um, is going to really waste resources, right? So again, I'm, I'm giving you my opinion, uh, but I think that'll also inform you, Synapse family, Synapse staff, on where, um, where I stand as a head of school, that values matter, um, that we make decisions based on our values, that context matters. Um, it is February in the middle of a pandemic and uh, vaccines are beginning to roll out and there's a lot of hope, but we still have a ways to go. Our teachers are working harder than I have ever seen any uh, teachers that I've worked with. Um, uh, they, they're working harder and smarter and with more enthusiasm during the most tremendously trying times. Uh, I, I can't, I, I, it's hard to even articulate. Um, what I'm seeing happen at Synapse. And I can only imagine that most staff and teachers at other schools are doing the same thing. And to, um, to, to, to understand how difficult it is to, um, to work in this environment day after day, um, I think you can't remind people enough uh, about that. So that is my, um, that is my uh, uh, sort of hot take <laughs> for today. Um, looking ahead to next week, uh, we will be back uh, in full distance as we test our way back into uh, our opening of campus uh, for those during hi doing hybrid. Uh, we have an amazing ninth grade experience event on Monday night for those who have eighth graders. Again, the high school, we're building a high school at the same time too, right? Pretty, pretty amazing. And uh, the annual conference for uh, NAIS is next week. We'll pre be presenting there and many others will be attending. There is uh, an equity, inclusion, diversity steering, steering committee meeting on Wednesday night. There's a common ground session on Thursday night. Um, looking at my calendar, there is a... Uh, uh, there's an SEL and anti-racism event on next, uh, following next Saturday. So there's a lot going on already. Uh, remember, Monday is a professional development day uh, for our teachers and our staff. Uh, so keep that in mind. They'll be deeply diving into PD work, which is really important as we head into our interactive lab. And re-enrollment agreements are due on Monday too. Uh, again, thanks for watching. I hope you had a wonderful break and um, I look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. Take care.